You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We're going to be speaking to um, Russell first. Uh, Russell, as always, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, good evening, Daniel. So uh, I think you're going to be um, talking uh, first, um, covering the sort of theme of uh, noise, but you've got a little bit of uh, an introduction to start uh, us yeah, off. Yes, so I've, I've been employed by Swell Borough Council now for seven years as an environment officer, and we, uh, in our department, deal with a wide range of environmental issues. But here to, tonight, I'm here to talk about nuisance noise. So uh, this must be uh, a busy time of uh, year for your department, Russell. Uh, yes, Daniel. During the summertime, our department receive a great deal of complaints regarding noise from parties, barbecues, gatherings. Um, there are a few steps that residents can take when they're planning uh, to have a party or, or a barbecue or any, any kind of outdoor event that's going to cause a significant amount of noise to their neighbours. What steps are there, Russell? Um Residents, when they're planning parties or barbecues or any outside event, there are there are steps they can take to kind of um, minimise any complaints or anyone that's impacted by their noise. And um, first of all, let your neighbour let your neighbours know, anyone in the close area area know that you're having a party, that you'll be playing loud music, and uh, and be open and honest about what time you intend. to to be playing loud music too and just be mindful that when you are are outside music travels a long way um and also bear in mind how many people you you are expecting to come to your party you know because um a great deal of people cause a great deal of noise when when arriving and leaving your property late at night um you could also consider if you wanted to minimise the amount of people affected by your noise, you know, if it's appropriate, invite your neighbours. Um, also, another issue, when you're situating a, a sound system outside somewhere, be mindful of where you're putting it. Um, you know, if you're having music on inside your house, then the chances are you've only got the neighbour either side affected. If a sound system, however, is outside, then you could be potentially looking at hundreds of people affected by your noise. And um, the council regularly on weekends receives a high number of calls regarding noise from, from parties in, in, in people's rear gardens. So, Russell, what other steps could party organisers actually take? Well, they could consider... Um, what time they intend to turn the music down and reducing the level, you know, and, and sticking to that time and not letting it go on to, to the early hours. Um, also, as I mentioned before, when you've got a large amount of guests, um, a party organiser really should be responsible for those guests and the noise that they create. So be mindful that you advise all your guests that when they leave you, your property late at night that they you remove any glass or litter from them as they leave and you you remind them that you know they are in a residential area and there's people trying to sleep and and that way you, you, the council won't receive a huge amount of complaints and there isn't people affected by your noise so uh, what can the uh, council do if uh, they're called out um, to a noisy party Russell I would like to say first of all that the, the council aren't party poopers and we will uh, work with residents um, to to advise them and educate them on the, you know the best ways to to have parties and gatherings um, however we do still have a statutory, statutory duty to respond to residents when they complain to us about noise nuisance that they're experiencing um, Swell Borough Council operate an out of hour service every Friday and Saturday night where residents can call us on a number which I'll, I'll give to you later on and, and they can access a service where um, we can come out um, when called uh, witness the noise if we deem it to be a nuisance then we will respond and and and, uh, and deal with it appropriately so uh, are there any other noise uh, issues that increase uh, yes, Daniel. During the summertime, we also see uh, an increase in intruder alarms. Um, the reason for this is mainly because residents go abroad during the summertime. Here is a peak in people leaving their properties for long periods of time, and um, 
the residents when experiencing alarms the first port of call is to, to ring the council um, so to prevent this we would say the best thing to do is if you're going on holiday and you know you're setting an alarm up let your neighbour know or someone in the area that you you know can come and switch that alarm off if it's activated um, the council used to hold a key holder base database but we don't anymore so we now we rely upon residents that have alarms to have someone as someone available to to switch that alarm off if if it does go off while they're away the unfortunate thing is that if the council are called we we do again have a statutory duty to deal with that alarm so you know that would involve us you know taking action against the alarm owner switching it off and the unfortunate part is the alarm owner could incur costs from that which we don't want you know so we would ask if you've got an intruder alarm do the responsible thing and just let someone nearby um, know about it and have access to it to switch it off if need be in talking to russell we're now going to be talking to uh, tim tim as always it's great to have you back here in the studio yeah hello daniel thanks very much so um, we are right in the middle of the uh, summer period at the moment and uh, lots of people are out and about with their dogs and I understand that uh, you want to discuss some general points about uh, owning dogs. Well normally when I come up here we, we pick a topic um, and then highlight on that but I thought because it is the height of the summer let's have a quick sort of run through of, of all the certain things. Now I mean dogs can be the best or the worst pet you can own. Um, what makes the difference strangely is not the dog um, because they're all brilliant we know that it's the owner and, and how you deal with the very important responsibility uh, of uh, owning a dog makes the difference between everyone having a great time and any number of possible problems so uh, what are your recommendations for safe dog walking then well i think initially there are three essentials needed for walking a dog firstly a dog because without a dog it would be a walk and walks can be quite boring on their own. Um, a light-hearted comment, but strangely, walking is, a very, is very good for your health. And I happen to personally enjoy walking on my own. But if you own a dog, it's a great motivational thing to get up every day, go out there and just have a half an hour, that's all you need, half an hour with a dog, having a walk, and, it, and the health benefits you'll get from that. And I'm not a doctor, but there have been studies that say half an hour of good brisk walking a day has tremendous health benefits. So, you know, use the dog as the motivational point for it. Um, so, yes, obviously a dog. Um, lead and collar, because no one should be walking a dog without a lead. Keep it under control. Um, and with a tag on it, of course, um, the tag is still vitally important. And the third essential are those lovely little bags that you have in your pocket. So if your dog decides to leave something somewhere, responsibly you pick it up and you just take it away don't leave it for other people to tread in and i think you had some more tips yeah i mean when when you're walking your dog um there are some obvious sensible things to do first of all my recommendation always is keep the dog on the lead until it is safe to let it off so you know your dog better than i do um, but it, it may well be that you want to find somewhere secure so that it can't run off um, what I always do with mine um, is if I see another dog walker, I don't let them go up and meet each other. I put my dog back on the lead because I've got a Jack Russell and I, I, I'm aware that she would be possibly um, more interested in, in keeping uh, the other dog away from her. So know your dog, but try to avoid any situation where there's going to be conflict between the dogs when you're out there. Um, if you're walking on the roads, always please put the dog on a lead. Um, it, it, no dog can be 100% under control if it's not on a lead near cars. It might see a cat in the garden across the road and run across there, and then the, the outcome of that isn't worth thinking. So, so just please use that. And also make sure that when you're walking the dog, um, it has got an ID tag on the collar. Um, and the final thing, I mentioned it earlier, if a dog does um, mess somewhere, please, please, please clear it up. So, Tim, you mentioned uh, dogs having a uh, collar and tag. What about microchipping? Um, do they still need a tag? 
Well, well, they do, actually. It's now a, a dual um, ID regulations. Um, as I spoke about before up here, in April this year, the new microchipping regulations came into force so that any dog over eight weeks old must now be microchipped. Um, and also the chip details must be kept up to date. But if you're out and about and you happen to find a stray dog, you're not going to have a microchip scanner in your pocket. So that's why the regulations that insist that basic ID is on a, um, a tag on the dog's collar, um, that's still in force. And it would also save you a lot of, of bother because um, rather than having to call us out to come and scan the dogs or take it to a vet to check it, um, the ID is there. Now, information that you put on the ID um, what we recommend is your surname the house number or name and postcode with a phone number please don't put the dog's name on the the tag because whoever finds it if they want to keep that dog will know what its name is so we had a call in that last record and um the um, call was saying that they've got a friend with uh, dogs who are working dogs, so they're uh, often uh, out and about, I assume, in um, sort of more rough ground. Um, and they were saying that they tend to not leave their collars or a tag on, because I always write about the collars and tags getting caught up or getting the dogs caught up, and how did they stand? It's a, it's a very good point, and, and thank you for phoning in about that one. Um, let's be, you know, we have to be sensible about all of these things. As far as the microchipping, there's no excuse for that. It doesn't affect the dog in any way as far as when it's working, so that idea is still there. Um, if you feel that there's, you're, you're, you're doing an activity with a dog where having a collar or a tag on would put the dog potentially at risk, then obviously don't do it. You know, that's, that, that just makes sense to me. Um, the, the main reason for, for any of these regulations is for the safety of the dog if the dog's found so we can get it back to its owner as quickly as possible. If it, it might be that if you're, I, I don't know, whatever you're using the dog for, um, but if it's it, out working, um, then be sensible and do what you think is best for it, OK? So uh, I know you next wanted to cover uh, no dogs on the beach during the summer. Yeah, we're, we're, we're right in the middle of summer now. And the, much like Russell said earlier about um, the council not wanting to be party poopers, um, the, the whole purpose of regulations is not to try and stop people having fun. Um, but we do have um, specific areas on the beaches on Sheppey where dogs certainly aren't allowed on the beaches and they have to be on leads on the promenades. Um, the purpose for this is so that families can go down and enjoy the seaside without having someone's dog running up and stealing their sandwiches or whatever while they're having a picnic on the beach um, and it also to keep the beaches clean as well but when you when you look at the amount of coastline we've got um, it's a very small area in Sheerness it runs from sort of Tesco's J um, Jacob's Point up to um, what I know is, as um, the, the Neptune up the end there so just that, that main part of Sheerness um, in Minster from roughly the Player Club up to the Little Oyster and then at the end of the promenade um, in Laysdown. so those small areas of beach um, no dogs on the beach at all and on the promenade itself kept on a lead so they're under control the rest of the coastline um, we welcome responsible dog owners you know get up there exercise your dogs up there as long as you keep them under control and you clear up after them then then we welcome it for those areas so it's just those three selected areas and that runs from the first of april uh, sorry the first of may right through until the end of september so i know you next want to talk about dogs left um, in uh, cars during this hot weather. Yeah, and this is another obvious one, but it's surprising how many times we get called out to dogs that are in cars. Um, today's been really warm. Tomorrow I hear it's going to be even hotter. But even in, in sort of the spring period, if the sun's out, it's staggering how quickly a car will heat up inside. Um, I don't believe anybody ever intends to do the dog any harm. Um, but life sometimes gets in the way. It might be that you decide to pop down to, to a cash machine and so you go and park the car in a car park the lowest amount you can do is half an hour so you put the money in the machine leave the dog in the car for five minutes pop down to the bank get the money out on the way back you meet up with an old school friend that you haven't seen for 30 years you get chatting 
suddenly 25 minutes has gone by you remember that you actually went there to get the money not talk to the old school friend get back to the car and it's too late so you know you, you haven't got a parking fine because you've only been 25 minutes but the dog's dead um, that sounds dramatic but it takes about 15 to 20 minutes in a car for a dog to pass out with heat exhaustion um, dogs unlike us you know they 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 um, sweat through the mouth they pant um, and it is just awful if if you don't know what it's like you know sit in the car with the window up for two minutes and see how quickly it gets hot so please 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 um, don't even if the weather forecast is going to be overcast if you don't if you don't there's, there's no need to take the dog with you leave it at home where it's safe it might not be as happy at home as it would be with you but when you get back you've still got a dog so when it's hot when it's summer just don't take the dog out and leave it in a car even with the window open um, it's not enough and and i've been to enough cases where we've had to take dogs out of cars uh, it's just not nice you know it's just the most awful thing in the world so just don't do it so dog fouling was the uh, next point yeah it's always always a good one um still ongoing um and i, I mentioned it earlier but look it's your dog your dog creates that problem which you create because you've got the dog. So just please, for everyone's sake, clear it up and dispose of it appropriately. If there's not a bin handy, put it into a normal litter bin. As long as it's bagged, um, it's quite acceptable to drop it in there. If you haven't got a litter bin handy, then take it home with you and put it in your, your green bin. Um, but what we're doing, we have, and I have spoken about it before, we are just on the verge of launching the full um, Ticks Pack promotion. Now, this is a, a scheme that we've, we've done in partnership with a Swedish company and um, they're providing a total of 30 bag dispensers at various hotspot areas across the borough and the great thing about this scheme is that it's funded by sensitive local advertising so it's not actually costing the taxpayer anything but it's a great benefit for dog walkers we still prefer and in fact i expect if you own a dog take bags with you but there are times when you may have forgotten um, so these dispensers now j just really for to give you an idea for the Sheerness area um, they're going to be located at the fleet um, the seafront at Garrison Point the seafront park behind the swimming pool uh, the canal bank on the halfway road there's going to be one there um, Barton's Point at the top and also in the car park and then Telescope Alley in Sheerness which is a fabulous cut through for people walking in Sheerness we're going to get rid of that old rusty one that was there and install one of these new ones there over in Rushenden, um, the Rushenden Green area in Manor Road, uh, Queenborough Harbour, and also the garden, which we always refer to as Elephant Park, by the seafront. And then Minster at the halfway at the cemetery there, um, the alleyway that runs between Halfway Primary School and the club, Minster Lees, where there is currently one on trial at the moment, um, opposite the player club, and then we're going to pop one also up at Lays Down Football Pitch um, up there to see how it goes. Now, what our plan is, is to monitor how popular they are and the use of them. And if we find that they're not being used so well, then we'll just move them about and put them into different areas. So we've been talking to uh, Russell, the environmental officer here in Swell, and also uh, Tim, of course, the animal control officer. And uh, Tim, I know you uh, want to finish off with uh, stray dogs and all the useful contact details. I do, because the stray dog service, it's, it's one of, for me, the most joyous part, strangely, of, of, of what I do, because it's when I actually get contact with dogs, and that's, that's the best part of it. Um, all dogs, at some point have have the desire if you like for freedom um, generally we manage to keep that contained but there are times when a dog will escape and if you find a dog um, when you're out and about then this is where we come in because um, basically you phone us up we come out we collect the dog and check it for id um, and so that's where the service comes from um, now during the day the best number to ring for the stray dog service is the main council switchboard number which is 01795 for 17850 but we do have an out of hour service and this operates from five until nine in the evenings mondays to fridays and from nine until nine in the evening saturday and sundays and bank holidays actually the only three days that we don't offer the service at all are christmas day boxing day and easter sunday 
So if you're out and about um, and find a dog out of hours, as we call it, um, then the number to ring is 07795 237 479. That's 07795 237 479. So what we're doing, let's just run through the contact numbers anyway. Um, on Russell's side, um, if you have a problem with noise, the out of hours number there is 01795 417575. That's 01795 417575. Any dog issues at all, or if you find a stray dog do it during the office hours, it's 01795 417 850. And if you find one out of hours between 5 and 9 weekdays and 9 and 9 at weekends, it's 07795 237 479. Tim and uh, Russell, as always, thank you very much for coming along. We always appreciate it. It's great to have you uh, up here. Thanks, Daniel. Cheers, Daniel. Thank you.